This is my 29 gallon dirted guppy tank and it's just over 3 months old now so I wanted to publish this video going over the tank setup and its progress. The tank does currently have two filters on it as I'm aging the hang on back canister filter in to remove the sponge filter so I can increase the stocking levels in this tank next month. So starting with the tank setup and this is the same 29 gallon tank that I've used in a couple of different setups now and I decided to repurpose it. I added the white background to it as the black backgrounds were sold out back when I set this up but looking back I wish I'd just waited until I could get a black background. This is just regular topsoil that I'm adding and usually I do sieve it prior to adding it to my tanks but I decided to just pour it in there and remove any of the large debris with my hands. Topsoil serves two main purposes in this type of aquarium setup. Its primary purpose is to gradually release CO2 into the water column as bacteria break down the carbon in the soil with the CO2 helping to promote healthy plant growth. The soil also serves as a backup source of micronutrients for the plants as I don't use liquid fertilisers in this type of tank and the fish food that I use may be deficient in some essential minerals. I smoothed the soil out to try and keep it as flat and horizontal as possible while also feeling for any debris in the soil that I can remove. As you can see I've added around 1 inch of topsoil to the bottom of the tank with it being pretty evenly spread across the full length of the aquarium. I have a quick play around with a couple of different hardscape layouts consisting of one piece of driftwood and three different pieces of lava rock but it doesn't take long to find something I like. This tank will serve as the overflow for the rejected shrimp from my breeding project so I just wanted to add as much moss as possible to try and offer plenty of grazing space for the shrimp. I'm using Christmas moss for this setup because I prefer the look of it but Java moss, Taiwan moss and pretty much any other type of moss will work too. I hold the moss in place on the driftwood and then I wrap thread around it over and over again to hold the moss in place until it can grow and anchor itself onto the driftwood. I was planning on using this driftwood in another aquarium setup so it does still have some glue marks on it from the previous idea I had for the other tank. Thankfully moss should easily be able to grow in and hide these marks so I add a little glue over the top of them and then push moss into it until the glue grabs hold of it. It doesn't take long to hide them and with any luck the moss will grow in over the coming months and hide these marks. Next up I add some glue to the top of the driftwood and place more Christmas moss onto the top of it to increase grazing spaces. I also add some clumps of Christmas moss to some of the lava rock that will be in this aquarium to try and offer my shrimp as much grazing space as possible. I've heard good things about sea chem fluoride black sand so I decided to give it a try but in all honesty I really wasn't impressed with it and I personally think it's overpriced. I usually use Petex Roman gravel for the cap and layer in my dirted tanks as it works out far cheaper than the sea chem sand and it usually works very well but unfortunately it was out of stock when I set this tank up. I poured the sand into the tank and then used my hand to flatten it out and cover the soil forming a solid cap and layer that covers the entire length of the aquarium. The cap and layer is around 1 inch deep and this should be enough to stop any nutrients leaking into the water column as well as prevent soil muddy in the water. Next I added some water to the tank to help work out any trapped air from the substrate layers as well as soften the substrate making it easier to add the plants. You can add some tissue paper, a saucepan or some bubble wrap or something like that to add a protective barrier over your substrate if you're worried about water pressure mixing your two layers. There was a surprising amount of air in the substrate in this tank so I ended up leaving it for around one hour so as much of the air as possible could just bubble out. Sea chem fluorite sand is meant to be a pre-washed product but it instantly clouded the water in this tank. Now I could have pre-washed the sand myself but I didn't think I would need to because the far cheaper products that I've used for my cap and layers usually don't have any issues with clouding and I was honestly expecting more considering the price tag. I siphoned some of the excess water out of the tank to remove as much of the clouded water as possible in the hope that it would make things easier later in the build. Next I added the driftwood to the tank in the back right with it forming a barrier for the fast grown stem plants. 
There is a risk of the substrate layers turning anaerobic and developing gas pockets when using hardscape in this type of aquarium, but I decided to give it a go as I've seen a lot of other people use hardscape in similar tanks without issue. Then I added the various lava rock to the tank to try and form different barriers and zones where I would plant different types of plant. This is what the tank looks like at this stage of the build and I was trying to just ignore the cloudy water. This top down view shows you the various areas that I've tried to create with the hardscape for the different types of plant. I prepped my Limnophilia sessiliflora with this being one of my favourite plants to use in dirted and Wallstad method tanks as it absorbs an absolute ton of nutrients from the water column. You get a lot of stems in the standard £5 pack but you can trim any of the excess plant growth and replant it in your substrate to get more plants if needed. I find it easier to plant stem plants with tweezers but you can use your fingers if needed. Initially I only added the Limnophilia sessiliflora to the back right of the tank as I wanted a few different stem plants in this area. Next I prepped some Rotala rotundifolia as it's another great plant that's always done well in my dirted and Wallstad tanks as it absorbs a lot of nutrients from the water column. The Rotala was added to the left of the Limnophilia sessiliflora leaving some space for another stem plant. Next I prepped some Ludwigia mini super red for the tank and I added that to the open area behind the driftwood complete in that section of the tank. I've wanted to try pearlweed for months but I was always put off giving it a try because it's marked as an advanced plant but I decided to try it in this tank. You get a huge amount of pearlweed in these small little in vitro cups so there's plenty of it in here for this tank. This was my first time using pearlweed but I just added the little plantlets into the substrate in the back left of the corner hoping that it would grow over time. This next plant is Echnodorus aquatica and it's my favourite sword plant as it stays relatively small and it looks great in my opinion. I added it between the lava rock and the driftwood to try and form a mid-ground barrier for the pearlweed in the tank. Next I prepped my Cryptwentii Tropica as you get a bunch of different plants in a single bundle and this was more than enough for this tank. I added the crypts around the lava rock in the tank in the hope that they would grow out to add more cover for my fish and shrimp. Then I added some tissue to act as a protective layer for the substrate and fill the tank with water. It was still cloudy but nowhere near as bad as the initial batch of water that I added earlier and thankfully the cloudiness did fade within days. This is what the tank looks like at this stage of the build and I know that the crypts look really bad and I was actually worried that they might not make it. The cloudy water was annoying me so I took a spare hang on back filter and filled it full of filter floss and then ran it for a couple of days to help remove the cloudiness. I chose to add a heater to the tank and set it to 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius but I know people who keep guppies at a wide range of temperatures and some people don't even add a heater. Then I placed a floating plant ring in the tank and added some of my salvinia to it. With this being a shrimp overflow tank from my breeding project I decided to add more moss to it and started making shrimp sticks. Provided you get 5mm wood dowel and 5mm airline suction cups this should work well in your own aquarium setups. I tied thread to one end of the dowel and then added a bunch of Christmas moss down the stick and wrapped my thread over it to hold the moss in place. As you can see the 5mm airline suction cups fit the 5mm dowel easily and it lets me mount this anywhere in the tank in any orientation that I want to meet my needs. I decided to place one of them in the back left of the tank above where the pearlweed would grow to in a horizontal position. Then I added the other one to the right hand side of the tank to add more grazing areas in that area. Two days later the cloudy water was finally starting to go but with its price tag I really don't think that I'll use sea chem sand again and it doesn't really look that black as it does in the photographs either. By day 4 the cloudy water had basically gone and the plants were starting to grow towards the light source in the tank. Speaking of light sources I'm using a Heigen 957 in this tank and I'm pretty sure this is just the default settings on it with the regular photo period. I had some moss left over from another tank build so I decided to add it into this tank with moss mats. 
Basically, you take a stainless steel grid and add some moss to it and then wrap thread over it to hold the moss in place. I made two of these and added one of them in the front left of the tank and one of them in the middle of the tank. My new guppies came three days earlier than they should have so I quickly put a quarantine tank together and floated their bags for temperature acclimatisation. The first signs of life were starting to show in the tank after the first week and the algae was forming amongst the salvinia floating plant leaves. The stems were starting to show why they are so popular in dirted tank setups as they had grown a lot in 7 days and my crypts were finally starting to look good. Unfortunately, a lot of the Christmas moss had actually turned yellow and I'm really not sure what caused this. I thought that it might have been due to the glue that I added to anchor it in place, but some of the glued Christmas moss on the lava rock looked normal. Then I noticed that the moss that I'd attached with the thread using no glue at all was also looking bad, so I thought that it might be an issue with those two first moss cups that I used on the build. Look at the growth on this Limnophilia sessiliflora in just 7 days and it's such a fast grown plant that is perfect for dirted and Wallstad method setups. My pearlweed had also started growing in giving me confidence that it would work in this tank even though it's officially marked as an advanced plant. Fast forward to week 2 and the tank was really starting to come alive during the cycling process. The stem plants had grown in even more and the brown diatom algae was starting to take hold on several surfaces. The limnophilia was consistently grown at a rapid pace and the Ludwigia and Rotala were also starting to grow. I know that some people like to do water changes during the cycle and process but I usually just leave the tank to do its thing and get on with it. My crypts were finally starting to grow their submerged leaves so I was confident that they were going to survive but they did hold their immersed grown leaves and didn't really have any melting issues in this tank. The Echnodorus aquatica in this tank was grown far quicker than the other ones I have in some of my other setups so I'm guessing it's due to the use of topsoil or something like that because it had a very fast growth pace. The moss that looked bad last week looked even worse this week and I honestly thought that a lot of this Christmas moss was going to fail. The moss on the shrimp sticks was doing fine though so I knew that there would be some grazing areas in here for the shrimp regardless of if that old moss did fail. My pearlweed was really starting to find its stride with its growth rate in the second week and it was quickly becoming one of my favourite plants. Fast forward to week 3 and the limnophilia was starting to take over the stem plant section of the tank and the brown diatom algae was pretty much on every surface. The phelan moss was starting to look even worse and I was a little annoyed because these little moss tubs can be expensive and at least two of them had failed on me. The Ludwigia mini super red had definitely seen better days in this tank but red plants can be tricky and it's all a learning process. By this time my Cryptocorn wentii tropica had all sprouted multiple submerged leaves but a lot of them were still holding on to all of their immersed leaves with nothing melting. The Echnodorus aquatica was still grown fast considering it's a sword plant but I was happy with the progress it was making. I had noticed the pearlweed starting to pearl as in giving off little air bubbles a couple of times this week and it had probably doubled in length in just 7 days. The moss mats had brown diatom algae on them but the actual moss on the mat was still grown without issue. Fast forward to week 4 and this is what the tank was looking like. The Limnophilia sessiliflora had reached the surface of the tank and it had just kept on growing at its rapid pace. The Rotola rotundifolia was starting to grow in and some of the Ludwigia stems were starting to get their colour back. Unfortunately the Ludwigia mini super red in my Wallstad better tank had started to melt causing problems with the water parameters in that setup. Due to this I decided to remove the Ludwigia in this tank at this stage to prevent any potential problems once I actually added the guppies to the tank. Again my pearlweed was constantly pearling throughout the day for this week and at this point it was just grown without issue so I was really happy with it. All of the crypts were doing really well and had a ton of submerged leaves grown on them now and I was confident that this plant wasn't going to have any issues. The Echnodorus aquatica's growth rate had slowed right down but I am curious if it had met its maximum growth height and it had just went into the maintenance mode because it was grown very fast for this month. I had been removing fistfuls of the salvinia each week in this tank but it had been grown without issue. 
The moss on the shrimp sticks and moss mats was grown well, but the failing moss was still having issues, but thankfully it was finally starting to show some signs of new healthy growth. I did a large water change in the tank to try and remove the high nitrates that had built up in the water column over the last month and then I dosed 2 ppm of Dr Tim's ammonia solution. By the next day my test kit was reading 0 ppm ammonia and 0 ppm nitrite so I was confident that the tank was cycled. Unfortunately I had lost two of the new guppies during the quarantine process but I removed the remaining guppies to my viewing booth to look for any potential problems. One of the red cobras seemed to have a hunched back, but the rest of the fish in here all looked healthy to me. The pH, GH, KH and water temperature in their quarantine tank was all the same as this tank that I'd set up, so I just added them to their new home without any drip acclimatisation. This new guppy tank is also the home for my existing guppies that I'd had for several months at this point, so I was confident that they had no type of infection. Still, I checked them in the viewing booth before adding them to the tank and they all looked fine. Again, their tank's water parameters are the same as this new tank so I added them directly to the tank without any drip acclimatisation. All of these guppies are male so I don't have to worry about overpopulation in the tank and things went well for a while. All of the plants continued to grow without issue and even the moss that had issues initially was starting to show signs of healthy growth. My guppies took it upon themselves to eat all of the remaining brown diatom algae in the tank saving me a job and the two groups of guppies seemed to have integrated fine. I did replant some excess limnophilia cuttings in the area where the Ludwigia had been but I can't remember when I actually did this it just adds more plant cover as well as helps to maintain safe and stable water parameters. Unfortunately two weeks later I did lose one of the new guppies and then over the course of three weeks I did lose a couple more. Ammonia, nitrite, pH, GH, KH and water temperature were all coming back good on my test kit so I really don't know what the issue was. That brings me up to today and thankfully I haven't lost any of the guppies in this tank in a few weeks so I am happy. I did recently add some Endler Guppy hybrids to the tank to add some more stocking in here and add slightly different colours. All of the Endler Guppy hybrids made it through their quarantine periods but one of them has started to look a little weak in the tank but the other five all look good. The plants in here are all doing really well and I'm happy with how things are going in this aquarium. My pearlweed had been grown at a rapid pace and in all honesty it seems like a very easy plant to grow and I have it in several different tanks now without issue. I have switched the salvinia out for some water lettuce as I wanted to give it a try but other than that everything in here is the same as it was after I removed the Ludwigia. As I mentioned back at the start of the video this second filter is new to the setup and it's currently aging in so its media can hold beneficial colonies of bacteria and archaea to maintain safe and stable water parameters. It's an all pond solutions HOB 500 hanging back canister filter that's filled with 30 ppi foam and a small amount of filter floss. I'm really not sure if I want to add more guppies to this tank once the filter is aged in or more endler guppy hybrids or maybe even some platies. I do consistently have issues with regular guppies and I can't work out why so I am leaning more towards either endler guppy hybrids or maybe some platies but time will tell. The larger filter does need another couple of weeks to build up its bacteria colony so I have plenty of time to make a decision. I have added some neocaridina and armano shrimp to this tank but so far there's only a handful of them in here. As my shrimp breeding tanks grow in population I will slowly move more of the lower grade shrimp over to this one and build up a colony in here. I actually really like the way this tank is looking but the pearlweed and limnophilia sessiliflora need trimming once per week or they just take over. The Rotola rotundifolia is being dominated by the limnophilia but I trim that once or twice per month right now. The swords and crypts haven't required any maintenance yet but some of the crypts still have some of their immersed grown leaves three months after planting and I am thinking of just chopping them off. The Christmas moss that had all of the issues is slowly starting to grow again but it really has taken ages. I will keep everyone updated with the progress of this tank in my monthly fish room tour videos but that brings this video to an end. 
Thanks for watching guys. I hope it's been helpful and entertaining. Have a good day.